Father, we honor you and we worship your name. We celebrate your separateness, your consecration to yourself. Tonight we have come to mingle with your separateness. We have come to mingle with your separateness. That you will put upon our lives your essence, that which distinguishes, that which unlocks the gates into a new place in you. We ask that you will do to us that which bears your signature, the things that cannot be replicated even when the strength of spirits are displayed. Thank you, Father. Gain a people for yourself. Gain a people for yourself. Let there be journeys upon which we end up closer to you than we began. Blessed be your matchless name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you. You may please be seated for a while. Firstly, I want to bless the name of the Lord for the privilege to be home again. Um, Thursday, Friday, last Wednesday, Thursday, last week, um, I was at the Federal College of Education in Abelkuta. And um, it was a great work that God began. Apparently, the the expectation of the conveners was not how God came and how God introduced me into his emphasis was that he attacked my notepad and 30 minutes into 30 minutes to my session I found out that the notes that I had delicately prepared were nowhere to be found. Um, the following morning was a minister's conference and the matters that God brought before us were very grave matters. And um, this is incident upon the many things that are happening in the body of Christ. And they are due to the fact that the church has sort of mastered um, coexistence or if you want it, it's called bipolar existence in medicine. Where the things of God have been carefully combined with the things of the enemy and both have been allowed to traffic. However, a day is upon us and the signature with which God has returned to his church is holiness. Holiness. So when it comes holy, what it begins to advertise is a call to separate existence. When he speaks those words long enough, he begins to sign off by, by certain disclosures that break hearts. He begins to peep into the secrets of men and he begins to give room for them to be brought to light. My cry is that you will in the days of the exposures of other men, clean up your house. Ah, okay. Your amen is weak. There will be two kinds of people who show up pure after this season. The first set will be those who were exposed. The enemy will not gain anyone that is exposed in our midst. The enemy will not. I know. I know, I know that that's the plan of the enemy, but um, one of the things that God is doing in intercession is to cover even the exposed so that they will not grieve unto walking away. There will be another group that will not be exposed, but will quickly align because of the exposures of others. That my prayer is to help us choose one side, which is the second side. 
So I'm saying that may the exposures of others teach you wisdom. Friday evening, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, I was with our brethren at um, the RCN embassy in, in Makoti. And God was gracious to us. We felt that the agenda was to give life to the gifts of the Spirit and further advertise what God was doing in the school of power. But we found out that what God wanted to do to initiate these power classes was to introduce quality control measures. So it was about mastering sources. It was about the assurance of the economy of gifts as possessed by God. It was the, the advertisement of the cardinal gifts of the New Testament. So that if you manifest a gift, the way to know is that it will track back if the signatures of the other gifts are inside you. I think you should get the summons. For example, if you manifest in the gift of the word of knowledge, which is one of the most common expressions of the gifts of this, I think more people have word of knowledge. The gift of the word of knowledge is not given in limbo. You must have received God's first gift of the New Testament. And the, God's first gift of the New Testament is not an essence, it's a person. You must have received Christ. He's the first gift. It is in administering the gift of Christ, which is foundationally eternal life, that you come in contact with the second gift. Oh, it's good to see you, my dear. You come in contact with the second gift of the New Testament, which is also not an essence, it's also a person, and that is the gift of the Spirit. So if you are not born again, if you manifest one of the gifts of the Spirit, we know that God does not give like that. But you're the one I saw today. Okay. So Christ, the Holy Spirit, and their gifts. So if we find out that the presence of the Holy Spirit outside the manifestation of the gifts has no sign inside you, you will doubt what you are doing. It's a simple thing. So we also had a class on receiving, the protocol for receiving. You cannot hasten God onto the reception of a gift because on the first day that the economy of power was advertised in the earth, Jesus' instructions from Luke chapter 24 was to tarry. It means you cannot bully God into the possession of a gift. He gives when he wants to. And he gives what he wants to. I know the verse in your heart is covet the best gift. Are you with me? So the question is, what is the best gift? None of the gifts are better than themselves. What establishes a gift as best is the problem at hand. So if we find out that there's something we need to solve, there's a mysterious situation. Now, that echo thing has started again here. There's a mysterious situation that we need to demystify. What we will need to undo it is the gift of the word of knowledge. In case what we have is the gift of faith, it means we cannot advance. So somebody will need to press consciously based on the strength of the now need to say, Lord, we need this gift. We need this gift. So the admonition was to convert the best gifts. But the apostle said, but what I would rather do is to show you a more excellent way. Because compassion is the gate that can suck you into an expression. We want to help this person badly. We want to help him badly. We don't have the gift. Then God sees your concern and then he smuggles a gift into you. So that's the more excellent way. Are you with me now? Because somebody is saying, Then on the last day, the Lord promised us floodgates. And it showed up. It showed up. So, I think Jerry has sent me all of the sermons now. Yes. So, by tonight, it will be on my Telegram page. You can put all of them on the church Telegram page too. So that our brethren can. 
I overheard my son, Joseph, trying to advertise that if God has taught somebody something and it's in a format where you can learn, he's no longer obligated to self-teach you. Are you with me? I know you listen to sermons. I am not sure anybody in this church listens to sermons as much as I do. I'm not sure. We don't have statistics. That's why I'm saying I'm not sure. But I'm not just, I don't just function with some kind of spiritual intelligence because God always comes to my room. If Jesus needs to come to your room to teach you everything, then something is wrong. Are you with me? Even the Bible you are reading is people's record. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But if there is, it means you are doing very well. You really must be doing well. So even me, I study, I listen a lot so that I can improve myself. So please, um, that's my admonition. So, okay, let my wife come. Just come, just come. I need to take counsel from you on a matter. No, just don't worry. All right. May you marry your own wife. Um, yeah, so. All right, so the prayers are on. That's the 30 days of supplication. How many of you have seen your lives advance with the prayers? Okay, very few. So the advancement in prayers many times does not start until after many days. It starts, but I mean it doesn't become, it does not become noticeable until after many days. Meditate upon these things. That was Paul's admonition to Timothy. Give thyself wholly to them that your profiting may be seen by all. Many times when we engage spiritually, the giving wholly, that's totally, does not happen after the first few days. Until you give yourself totally to these things, um, your profiting will not be seen by all, including you. So you don't know that anything is happening to you. So, do we have the flyer? Okay, so, so the 30 days. I also want us to trust the Lord to begin to prepare for the shift. We have many instructions from Jesus. And I know that he will keep his word. I just want to clear these things out of the way. Finally, I will be away for a few days. Um, a summons has come from the nation of Kenya and um, before the week ends I have to be out for a while so we are not the kind of church where we say please be coming to church you, or you will be doing that again uh, I don't even know you when you come to church I mean it's not like I mark your register so please Whatever God has committed into your hands must be done perfectly. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and 13. I want to use that to admonish for the short season of my being away. You can be sure I will not be away for long. And it's not just because of the work. Ah, Fikayo. Oh yeah, come and sit down here. Come and sit down here. Come and sit down. Did you come alone? Why is she? Ah, okay. So come and sit down here. So if I've heard me talk about Fikayo, Fikayo, Fikayo. Fikayo is like, uh, it's like my Silas. Uh, we have done many missionary journeys together. And it has pleased Jesus to give to me a damn say. He loves this young lady seriously. May I come? So please stand down. You can help me create a space for them around here. Uh, 
is one person that I can that can follow me to a meeting and I do the one. And then when we wake up the following morning and I'll tell him, I'm traveling to another place, continue the conference. That's the kind of person he is. And I have seen, I have seen not just in word, but in deed, very strong replication. We are many. We are many. We are many. That's why you must be numbered. We are very many. And one of the things that I believe God has done for my spiritual father that he has fulfilled in my life is that our sons are strong. So, the recruitment drive is still on. But we are men. We are men. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation. Let me say something is wrong. With fear and trembling. Work out whose salvation? Your own. The admonishment to work out is built on the consciousness that something has been worked into you. God has accomplished his own aspect of the labor. And so in partnership with the Holy Spirit, you must work something out. I just gave you an expo because this verse ended with a problem. How do I work out what was worked in? Verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, but to do, to will rather, and to do of his good pleasure. So if we find anyone operating in accuracy is because that person took up the responsibility to give practical expression to what God had put inside them. When you decide to, the Holy Spirit kickstarts a labor inside you. And the first thing it does is that it begins to create an economy that gives you desire. Your heart to be filled with desire. That's how people stay praying. It's the Holy Spirit that creates the desire. We are not, it's not mechanical. That's how people stay with scriptures. You know you should read your Bible. You, you go off it, but he keeps coming back because there's a flow of desire. And with the desire, when you say yes to the desire, the shape of the flood or the stream that comes to you is altered, then might, which is the capacity to do, is supplied. So what Paul put here is a, it's a process line. Take responsibility. He gives desire. Embrace the desire. He gives capacity. Are you with me? You will please him. So, my beloved wife, our pastors, our ministers, we ensure that very strong ministry is sustained in this house. And like I said, one of the reasons why I really need to come back is not because of the work. Is because of my wife. That's why you can know I will not be long. Uh -huh. Last, last, John can preach now. Uh -huh. But my wife is my wife, so it means I'll be back very soon. So please pray and trust God that we will not just um, go to enjoy the 16 to 18 degrees centigrade, but that we will be able to leave an imprint of God in the places that we go. Amen. All right. Tonight is an anointing service. However, there's a twist because there will be no, no physical medium of communication. That's the instruction the Lord gave. So you'll be wondering, no, there's no bottle of oil. The Lord will come. Are you with me? And he will touch you. The oil is not wrong, but he tells us what to do part time. Some of our physical mediums of administering the essences of the spirit have become idolized because they were sustained in use beyond the commandment. Are you with me? So that if God says, do this thing, it is possible
to continue to do it, to, to do it, even when you have not heard the second, do it again. So it means that you don't have a prop. It's either he touches you or you touch him, or you are not touched at all. So when we begin to pray shortly, I want you to press until there is a knowing that you met with him. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Oh, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all
itetoko shando telendo kebeto ai keve kombe pa moka ni atas ai verunda ni atatatatas oh oh toka velene leto kota hatamoma mientu shusa mieko kave me momo satama brandu jesu anai vele hetoria hatana you are greater you are greater you are greater mightier your glory fills the heavens beyond the farthest stars how excellent your name in all the earth blessed be your name Blessed be your name. As the deepens forward, as so my soul. into prayers and engaging the administrator of God's distribution systems which is the Holy Ghost but because you will live long enough you must understand that you will need to self enter into certain things in God are you with me in the last two weeks or in the last two weeks i have had more prayer requests come through my social media pages and for some of these prayer requests i have found out that in in engaging them i need to engage like a midwife the assignment of the midwife is not designed to be one of so somebody says there is a situation and then you pray and they say oh there were five wrong things that were happening to me two are gone sir please pray more so it's it's like elijah praying and telling his servant to check until the full delivery of answers have come i keep getting the request sir things are improving things are improving the problem before was all of us were sick we had no food to eat I know sometimes sickness masks the absence of food. Especially if you have malaria. Sir, thank God, thank God, thank God. We are all well. But now we are hungry. Please pray more. So you now pray more. Ah, sir, God supplied breakfast, but I'm just giving you an, a scenario. We don't even know what we eat tomorrow. And I said to one of them after a while, I said, since I'm praying for you, can you be praying for me? 
can we exchange prayer points so that because the one who is the subject of intercession or the object of intercession is also enjoying the scriptures to be an intercessor. So that if all of us are praying for you, you will not be accurate as regards the dispensing of prayer if you two are not praying for somebody else. So when we focus praying for you, it doesn't, you cannot continue to just pray for yourself alone. You will not have fulfilled the terms of prayer. Maybe I should give you a cheat code. When you become overwhelmed and you call out to somebody to pray for you, maybe it's because you can't stay long in prayer. Please use your few minutes in prayer not to pray for yourself. Pray for the person that is praying for you. If Satan wants to expose you to the absence of prayer cover, what he will do is that he will encumber the person praying for you. Tinaban Juni. May God give you understanding. The one who has taken your responsibility, you must also take responsibility for that person. Your prayer will be God because he has taken responsibility for him. Help him take responsibility for me. He needs prayer too. The cross was intercessory. I mean the whole enterprise of the cross was intercessory. Jesus put his life on the line so that he could bridge the gap between man and God. The cross was not foundationally about Satan. Are you with me? What sent Jesus to the cross is the justice system of God. The soul that sinned shall die. In the day that you eat of the fruit of this tree, in dying you will die. So the death or the die that produced the cross, Abi. The die that produced the cross was a die on the strength of the justice system of God. So if you are trying to, to gain reputation from God, the first time we heard death, it was built into a God system. It's for another day. Whether you think God is good or is not good, he is who he is. The reputations of God are for your advantage. They don't swell him. You think if we praise God, he said we not swell. God was delivered perfect. Did I say delivered? He showed up perfect. We got to know him in perfection. And perfect means cannot be improved upon, cannot be upgraded, cannot even be downgraded. He's static. So the reason for education is so that you can self-prosecute your course. And then as you grow in Christ, you also begin to advertise the possession of tools that give you the privilege to bring people on that same journey that you have been brought on. So that your exposure to God is not an end, it's a means to a greater end. Jeremiah chapter 1 is where I want us to start from because there was a word that was used to advertise the commissioning of Jeremiah that I perceive that God wants to use to advertise his labors over our lives in this season. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 to 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations then said I ah Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt 
speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I'll run my commentary. Let me just finish with you. See, I have this day set thee. And my key phrase is set thee. So you can mark it. In case you want to preach the sermon, you can preach it under the subject set thee. You know, when I was younger in ministry, I used to like all those wonder topics. D. Come. If the topic is come, you now know what I want to preach. Because the number of comes is scripture. So I was more of a mystery preacher. And I learned as I grew up. You know, some of you, Revelations is your topic, but you call it Apocalypse. So that when we come, if we don't have a lexicon, we are confused. We first need to go and know the topic, they will now start engaging. Age used to cure some things. You understand that the job of a minister is not to mystify, is to demystify. His job is to simplify counsels that are already available. You know that the mandate, the mandate by which you came into the economy of God, that's uh, in, in Romans chapter 10, was not a new instruction to the children of Israel. Because the way it was introduced was the word is nidi. Even the word is nidi in thy mouth. It means you are, you are conversant with what I'm about to say. This word of faith that we preach, you are conversant with it, it is close to you. It's in your mouth, it means you have been saying it. It's even in your heart. It means it has been a subject of meditation. Which is the word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess. Are you with me? So it was, it was not a new thing. They may have had it as a mantra before. Now it was establishing it as a gate entrance. So we are not called to go and preach. The length of the hair on the angels. And on, on, on all of these mysterious things that. Because the mystery teachers are coming back. Unfortunately, these ones are even worse than the ones that came before. The ones that came before had mastery of mystery. These new ones. So if you are here in church, it's a time to signify, Pastor Dela will meet you, you carry out your repentance, and then you can come back. May God give you understanding. See, I have this day set thee over nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. So let's begin our journey. We want to look at that portion again, then we'll now sit into the phrase set the because that's what this service is about. It's a setting service. Verse 4. The few verses before the fourth verse were an attempt by this prophet to give earthly identity to himself. Is very key. And I think it's something that must return. The excellency of power at work in the believer is not built into his natural birth. It's not built into his natural competencies. There are professors who are children at these things. And I have seen a professor of quantum or physics, not quantum physics, 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 at least I've dealt at that level before. A professor of physics. 
that is a slave of metaphysical powers. <laughs> if he sustains his journey, he will have been able to unlock a, a pseudo spiritual dimension. But I'm saying he knows all the laws. He knows that if you move through space, you displace something. Not so. What's the movement of those particles called? Brownian motion. Hey, but he was just walking through space. He understands the law of displacement. But the particles were supposed to be displaced. It was the one that was displaced. And based on physics, the momentum at which those particles move cannot move a man. That's why your journey through space does not have entrance. Okay, people do not do physics. Some of you are still doing physics. You don't know momentum. That's mass times velocity, right? I'm saying that the mass of those particles in space and their velocity, the product of it is not as strong as your own. Where you win actually is not velocity, it's mass. So if you are walking through space, invisible particles are being dispersed. But the professor, he walked through space and it was him that was dispersed, mental condition. Not because he met his spirit. You know, to use this space is space. On Sunday night, one of the things the Lord said to me, and the young man came and interviewed him, was that there was a young man who had started teaching strangely from scriptures. And that he entered into that dimension of spiritual education because a spirit met him. And then this, the word the Lord gave me was a friendly spirit met him. And the friendly spirit began to guide him in scriptures. Contrary to the spirit of scriptures. Now he has become a high sounding man. But he, uh, he is now an agent of a spirit. And the young man walked out. There was also one that the Lord told me that. This guy has no antecedents in the prophetic. Never met the Holy Ghost before. But a spirit physically met him. And from that meeting with the spirit, he could see events, most times the negative ones. He, that guy knows where the bandits will strike next. He knows where bloodshed will be. He knows when. He became that prolific by the strength of a spirit. So when we called him, I felt he was even going to say I was walking in the woods. He said that he was walking in their compound. And then his black object Solid showed up. There was an embrace, and the next thing it became prophetic. You can't go to school to read that thing. Your professors will say it's a lie, but if they are embraced, they will also see. Are you with me? So, our natural antecedents do not give us any rating in the realm of the spirit. But it is good to be aware of your natural antecedents for we are not sufficient of ourselves to do these things. That's where you arrive at, that a man. I shouldn't be able to teach scriptures at all. For lack of formal training and many other things. But like that young man who began to see, I also met a spirit. I met this spirit. And tonight, if you have cognitive knowledge of your encounters with this spirit, it means that there will be something unique about your existence after we close tonight that could not have been produced by learning, could not have been produced in your bloodline. It will only be traceable to the evening of the 29th of October, 2024. I met this spirit and this is what I got from him. Ah, you are not convinced. Shackled by heavy burdens, that's the song. Neath, that's underneath. A load of care and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and I'm no longer. 
the same. That's a man's testimony. He touched me. He touched me. And no work joy now fills my soul. So he now shared his testimony. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. I don't know if pastor remembers. Some years ago I was saying, if your late, grand, late great-grandfather, if as you are going home tonight, he meets you, he now says, my wa, my wa, and he touches your shoulder, there will be an imprint. Something, some new encounter, it can even be fear. But the fear will be so palpable that we will all know that it was not that somebody preached fear to you. you an encounter sponsored it. The woman with the issue of blood remains an eternal, an eternal um, rebuke to every man who claims that he had an encounter with Jesus. Because her story was before and after. I'm saying that if you touch God tonight, you will have a before and after reality. It's, it's not stories. It's not stories. <laughs> so it was after his natural antecedents, which were actually disqualifying tools, to show that it was an encounter that produced this man. He said, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, what did he say? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew this. So biology tells you that the baby self matures, but God is saying beyond the growth of the baby, there was a putting together. Even from the womb, the tools for destiny are coupled together. You have left them to genetic makeup. Those things disqualify. That you are tall does not mean you can represent Jesus. That you are short also does not mean that you have a disadvantage. That you are dark does not mean that you are a messenger of Satan. <laughs> that you are light does not mean that you are, you are, you are, you are an emissary of light. He looks at what he wants to do with your life. And then he begins to couple things together. Things biological, things spiritual. If you don't believe, why did John move when Mary came? Why did he move? If you have been pregnant, you will know that if you are pregnant and you are spiritual, there are spiritual potencies that pregnant women walk into. It's like the oil on the baby begins to run the mother. At least I saw it for her two children. I think my wife became more prophetic with her second child. She was more prayerful with her first one. It was my job to say, Kai, you are pregnant. Don't pray like that. Because there were days she could not stand she will now lie on the ground. So the big stomach is, is there. And then she's run. Even me, I've prayed I want to sleep. When I look at her, I'll be motivated that Kai, you are this woman's husband. You are this woman's husband. <laughs> you can't be sleeping when she's praying. So some way, the way to sleep sometimes is be gentle with your body. Be, please, I beg you. Nothing bad must happen to you. Then she'll not turn it down. But I saw that with this baby. The eyes were like the eyes of an eagle. Many times is God introducing you to the shape of the baby because there is already a formation that has gone into the baby. Are you with me? And before thou camest forth, out of the womb I sanctified thee. And what sanctified here is not just clean up. Is that I set you apart. That's the way children are. Everyone on his path. Because of a setting apart. So the Bible enjoins parents to train up a child 
in the way that he should go. I hear churches now say in the way of the Lord. No, no, no. Training a child in the way of the Lord is a generic thing. In the way that he should go, it means you must understand the, the, the reality of that baby's sanctification. What was he set apart to do? If you don't know it, you don't know the child. We don't know how many children were born to the parents of Samson. But it's this one's head that a blade must not touch. We don't know if John the Baptist had siblings. But it is this one that must not drink wine. It is this one that will be great in the sight of the Lord. The other ones may be social media influencers. But if John ever influences, it's because something came on his head from God. Are you with me? It means even at birth you are unique. And maybe I should blow your mind. You are here because of your sanctification. Because what God begins to do is that he begins to demand for a return on investment. And the convictions that brought you through the gates of salvation were built into the demand for a return on investment. This is what you mean. Uh, were you born a Christian? No, you, you see. My pastor was not born a Christian. He was of our cousins. You, you still have a cousin name. But now he's a, he's a pastor. He's not just a pastor. He married a pastor's daughter. <laughs> Abina, oh yeah, wave your hand. Wave your hand. Let them see you. Uh -huh. that, that's, you would think, oh, when they spoke to me, I now decided I want to give my life to Christ. You were manipulated into the, into, into the place because of the separation. The separation. That's why you can't grow up and not choose separation. Because that's, that was settled in God before you came. Meanwhile, you can't look to trends to know how to separate. You will also need to journey to before you came out of the womb. That was the last place that your life was correct. Are you with me? I mean, if you are confused about who you are, that's where you should journey to. What was the decision before I came out? You know that Thomas Sanjo was not brought out from prison to be a regular person. He was brought out of prison to be the next president. That's why they brought him out of prison. They had looked at the nation. Oh, the nation is boiling. The nation is boiling. Why is it boiling? The South feels cheated. Who can we use? We can use this man. So that's why they brought him out of prison. If he ended up the governor of Ogun State, it means that his life became a lie. Why did he save you? 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 Did he save you? The, the answer to that question is built into a prayer point that Paul raised. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That's the reason why he called you into his marvelous light. Is what you get to know when your eyes are enlightened. Everybody touch your physical eyes. Can we pray for two minutes? Flood these eyes with light. Flood these eyes with light. Flood these eyes with light. Our lives are lies until there's anointing. Flood these eyes with light. You will not be able to draw into the things that make your life true until your eyes are flooded. Flood my eyes with light. Let there be noise. As we pray this, we pray for our children. In the children's department, that by encounters, by encounters in dreams and visions, they will early in life cards that they they paparata to a tie, fete temes, falita tibatanas, tumpa papa lefetelos, erofela kata papon fe babai, papo 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 kapatata, e kopo peleto. For every Carlos, I want to know what you had in mind in the day that you summoned me. Selo kelo breke 
fe kona e fa ma ba kokokota santo brika pompa twa tato kapota kebebe beta po she kepa po ma pa in jesus name we are prayed listen to me every other giving of god to you will be because of that hope of his calling that is why he anoints us he does not anoint us to prosecute agendas that are earthy are you with me no doubt we will always be more anointed than ourselves and i'm saying when it comes to the anointing you can only pray yourself to be yourself if someone was given a 10 is because of the the base reason are you with me our numerators in the fractions of our lives are built on denominators ha huh? jesus help me finish this thing i sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations it's not everybody who is a prophet unto the nations it advertises that the offices in which we will stand to express the counsels of God over our lives are always accompanied by a geog by geographical boundaries. And I'll show you in scripture shortly. Geographical boundaries. I ordain you a prophet to your family. I ordain you a prophet to your campus. I ordain you a prophet to your region, to your state. I ordain you a prophet to your nation. I ordain you a prophet to the nations. The prophetic enterprise of Jeremiah was designed to have global impact. And Pastor Deola, today we are still reading Jeremiah. There were other prophets whose scope of prophetic expression were not this wide. I'm trying to say that you cannot directly appropriate the scope of Jeremiah's commissioning. But that verse advertises that there is a sanctification. The sanctification produces office-based existence. And the office-based existence is built into a geographical region of expression. Are you with me? Okay. Verse 6. Then said, ah, because when he speaks after this fashion, our response is that we become staggered. So, Pastor Diola, maybe the Lord comes and says, there's something I'm going to do in North America, and I'm building it on your shoulder. Will you just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Uh, we did, we did, we did. What, what that utterance we do, it, maybe before you felt you full ground, you know, you know that you full ground thing. When he says it, if you see it, you will go this way. Say, Lord, you know I cannot. It's like the utterance takes away your strength. It makes you understand that if it doesn't push you, you will live a life contrary to what he has advertised. <laughs> Behold, I cannot speak. Ah. For I am a child. You understand the relationship between cannot speak and a child? It means I don't have the right perspectives. I don't think well. I don't even have the accurate behavior. I don't act well. And so I cannot end up talking well. So he says I cannot speak. For I am a child. Verse 7, we're almost there. But the Lord said unto me, Say not. And I brought a word from the Lord to someone tonight. Say not. Who had believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? God becomes operational when believing is in place. I can't remember where I was speaking. And I was talking about humility. I think it was in Abelkut. Maybe. And I said that humility is not God saying on a scale of 1 to 10. God comes to you and says, you are an 8. 
You now say, Lord, I'm a tool. I'm humble. What you have called God is a liar. And you will be judged of pride because you feel that you have a superior perspective to God. Even though on this side they say, he's an eight. Oh, no, he's saying it's a two. Ah, Unirele, it's a beast. No. The descent of the Christ has advertised in Philippians chapter 2, or you can call them the, the eight layers of the submissions of the Christ, were built into his consciousness of the matters at hand. He can't approach the cross in his glory. Are you with me? So he needed to shed. He needed to take up another form. He needed to be obedient. It had to be the death of the cross. Are you with me? So they were built into a council that was finding expression. We do not make ourselves of no reputation until we have judged that our new place of arrival is God's new measurement. So Jesus was descending on the strength of his knowing of the new measurements. If he had stayed as a son, when he was supposed to step into servanthood, he would have been proud. So he was a 10 over 10. But for the cross, he had to be a 1. So God said, 1 is a new position. And what did he do? He quickly did everything to arrive at 1. Humility starts with agreeing with God. Is this who you say I am? I believe you. But you know that I cannot express it. So you will help me. So there's no ground for pride. Because every time you function as an eight and people clap for you, you say we are not sufficient of ourselves to be an eight. By sufficiencies of God. I'm just an eighteen vessel. What advertises as the excellency of power is what? The great treasure. The great treasure. I, I was greeting Reverend Oraka this evening, this afternoon. I said, my big uncle. Ah, he said, Tolu, now you be big man now. I said, wait till make me big man. Now be say, I get big uncle. <laughs> Abi, if you are a small uncle, I'll be a small man. But if I, I can have a big uncle and, and not be a big man. I, I'm trying to bring that to make you understand that even if God calls you something, there's a way you put it back to you. So if God says, great David, you say, oh, great David of the great God. Are you with me? Because if you take the great God away, you will not even be David G. <laughs> Amen. Say not, I am a child. That's not what I called you. There are dispositions to the anointing, and I'm not teaching that tonight. There are dispositions. That when God invests himself inside you, there's a way you carry yourself. You must carry yourself with a consciousness that gives life to what you are carrying. As I'm preparing for next year, I told my wife, we'll start, the year is conquering for the king. The first thing we want to understand is the spirit of the king. And I have eight topics already. We want to look at the layers of the Holy Spirit. And every layer that is revealed, we agree with it. Because we need him activated across all of those layers. For thou shalt go. I didn't call you a man. So calling yourself a child, those, that metric system is not involved in what we are saying. Prophet unto the nations does not have as its opposite a child. Abi? It's the opposite of prophet, child. It means... That metric system you are bringing is not involved here. You can be a child by age. But if I called you a prophet to the nations, it's because your age doesn't matter here. Thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Next verse. So you don't even need to think about who to go to. Your job is to wait on a map or wait on the revelation of a compass. Once the compass shows, you move. And when you arrive, you don't need to think what you will say. It's me that will give you words. 
and then you will do it. I'm trying to give you a picture of what God wants to do tonight so that we, in the way we begin to operate. Your movement, your, your, what spurs you to activity will be an instruction. How you act will also be at the mercy of an instruction. So you essentially just be a vessel. Be not afraid of their faces. Because they have faces that make people afraid. For I am with thee to deliver thee. Say it the Lord. Be not afraid of their faces. I am with thee to deliver thee. The concept of deliverance is built into the consciousness of places. So when a baby is delivered, it is bringing out from. It means the place, what I am sending you into is a place. These faces are in places. They are in dimensions. They govern entrances. They mark corridors on your path of expression. So this is where you were. That's where you are going. There's a corridor. And like a baby is formed in the womb and the baby is delivered, you, there will be passing throughs. And the agenda of the faces is to ensure that what you have been commissioned to do does not find expression. But I'll bring you out on the other side. Then the Lord... Put forth his hand, the touch, the touch. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll do some organic um, teaching like that. The touch of God. What happens when God touches a man? When was the first time God touched a man? Anybody? That's not Timo. When was the first time God had physical contact with man? That's the first touch. So, in the garden, okay. is that what you said? No, it's not in the garden. Man was not formed in the garden. Man was formed on the ground. Abby, man was formed on the ground. He was now carried into the garden. But you're right. It's the scenario. It's as early as Genesis chapter two that God has been touching man. It means it is one of the earliest um, earliest protocols of divine interaction a touch you were formed as the result of a touch and if I form you as a result of a touch with my hands what will be on you my fingerprints your life was supposed to be a sum total of God did it And what he uses to make that happen is a touch. We'll pray, we'll pray. I have five prayer points. I will pray all of them well. Then I'll now put the five prayer points on the platform so that those who are interested can keep pushing. Touch my mouth and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth, so you, you will be an echo permanent. Last verse. See this day or see I have this day. It's a new day, but before God brings into the consciousness of the new activity, he acts. Acknowledgement is what we need to activate Jeremiah 110 because I have already done it. And what I did was that I have this day set thee over nations. You are a prophet unto the nations, but you see what he's saying is I'm giving you authority over the new location. He was a prophet unto where? The nations. But he was not sitting on the nations. He was not even sitting on the people. God is saying, that personality that I introduced, now I authorize it unto the nations. And when you are set upon the nations, your reality will be of sixfold. 
the first thing you will do is to root out it means there are things planted they've gained balance when you root out something it's to eliminate until there is no possibility of recovery to pull down there are things that have been set up like statues structures that give expression to negativity you, you, you know how they pull down statues they tie a rope on it they now, they now drag it to pull down to destroy it's possible when you uproot somebody can still transplant Abi tell about where girl when they get girl come to where girl to who and so the way to ensure that cassava does not grow again is what when you take the cassava you will burn the stick That even those who are programmed to mourn for the demise of the God in the territory, eh, there will be nothing to mourn around. Because if they start crying, we will ask them, what are you crying for now? Say, it's our God who they pulled down. Where is your God? The God has been destroyed. The last thing is to throw down because they are also hanging things. They are suspended things. That's what you do. When we speak of... I don't want to go that way. When you speak of suspended things, there are things that were not concocted in the earth. You know that Jacob's ladder was not a suspended ladder. It was a man that gave rise to that civilization. There are also hanging civilizations. Like if you go to those our older churches, the fan has no bearing in the earth. It's a hanging fan. So you can't root it out because his roots are not here. He root one year, a man throw down it. Somebody will dislodge it from the top. And like I've told you, in warfare, ha! Huh, don't play again. My spirit is alive. So give me ten minutes. In warfare, you must understand jurisdiction. You don't have power over what happens in the heavens or in heaven. Your only place of expression is the earth. Are you with me? Your dominion over spirits is in the earth. If something is concocted in the realm above us, your labor in prayers is what we call instigation. It means you raise a formal petition to heaven. Say, oh, Lord, see what is happening in our city. He will now give charge to the princes of the city on his side to do warfare. That's what Daniel stayed doing. There's captivity on ground. When would we be free? He was not even aware of the shape of warfare that was up there. Maybe if he had been aware, he would not have said, ah, t ransom. That's all he can say. Ah, t ransom. He was not in the know of the shape of the warfare in the, that the answer was coming and that they were laid him because your job is instigation. You keep reporting. And as long as you keep reporting, you know, you are in class and then somebody bullies you. You now tell the teacher, he's bullying me. Even our children do it well. You now tell the teacher now says, stop bullying him. What do our children do if the bullying continues? Say, auntie, he's still bullying me. So you hear the auntie say, I think I told you to stop doing this thing. As long as there is a cry, the judge will move. The situations that some of you personally, families, people you are praying for are going through, need sustained instigation is one of the realities of prayer that is captured in what we call opportunity. As long as the situation has not changed and faith has not been furnished that, sorry, is it faith now? Faith, but it manifests as what we call the peace of God. It has not been furnished. You will keep reporting the case. Uh, once in Sukumbio, once in Sukumbio, 
uh, once it's sukun, so that whoever is sustaining the activity that is causing the cry will be repeatedly checked. All of those forced four realities is actually negative activity. Because if you have built a civilization, maybe a house, a factory, a, a, an industry on virgin ground before, this is how you start. Until the ground is clear, we don't plant and build. What God used to produce this fourfold reality in Genesis chapter 1 was the administration of a reality. Let there be light. Immediately light came, you could move things around. Are you with me? When you have done this, you will now plant. Give me my scripture back. I don't want this one. Maybe Pastor Dela will preach, let there be light. To build, you don't want to preach, let there be light. She beats me, I'll give you a topic. To build and to plant. So, I will give one of the pastors that topic. Not let there be light. To build and to plant. Because when darkness invades a family, invades a territory, the way to permanently keep darkness under lock and key is to go beyond these four destructive things. Is to do the construction things. And building and planting are two different things. The longevity of expression for both is different. The realities that both of them produce, planting produces a harvest. Does building produce harvest? What does it produce? What does your house do to you? What does it provide for you? Shelter. It's so the realities of preservation and sustained reality. That's what you see there. So, at least I've given you a spoon now. So you now look across scriptures. That's how to study it. And then you find out when there was an instruction to build and when there was an instruction to plant. Because God gave those instructions, plenty of them in scriptures. Amen. Our burden is... You can play now. You can play now. Our burden is... Set thee. Sorry, I know you want to go home now, but be patient. Set thee. I'll do much of reading so that we can go home. I'm waiting. Set thee. Set thee. Set thee. The actual word there is set. So what I did was to peep into the word set because I want to know what God wants to do. I have introduced to you that this reality is built into a location, the nations. And one of the things God said to me about this anointing service is that there's a dimensional gate that is opening to us as a ministry, as individuals. A dimension is a realm of one higher knowledge. It's a realm of higher expressions. It's a realm of higher experiences. You experience deeper encounters so that your possessed knowledge will be greater. Your wisdom will be greater. And according to scriptures, because wisdom is justified by her children. The children of wisdom is the life it produces. It means that we'll have higher expressions. But it's a place. And what the enemy does is to lock the gates. Keep people within a realm where they may be thriving, but the good that they have handled becomes the enemy of the better and the best that God is taking them into. The commission is actually built into an invitation to come into a new place, but you have to be anointed for it because there will be contentions. I passed through Access Bank this morning, and one of my friends, who is a security man, I told you I have friends everywhere. So if they lock the bank now and say, all of you be queuing, there's no cash in the bank, I will not be stranded because I have friends there. I can say, check it, what? 
Oh yeah, my bonus. The line can be 500. I will just walk to the door and go inside. That, that's his, his favor. If you are interested, I'll tell you how to. The Bible says make friends for yourselves with what? With what? Ah, if you, have, if you know it, say it. Make friends for yourself with unjust mammon, unjust mammon. May God give you understanding. Our economy has been, has been adjudged to be unjust. So, when the Bible says unjust mammon, you see these notes that we, we flash, uh, that's how they've been categorized in God. So if you want to be enter bring banks like that, you must know when to withhold. You still don't understand. When there's free entrance, you shouldn't come out and just walk away. Oh yeah, if you're a cook. That's how it happens. Oh, you don't know. You know it's only your friends you give money to. I enter a filling station. Very rough looking guys just come. Ah, pastor, daddy, daddy, a big power. Oh, don't send them away. Oh, how buruku? Oni, ayah. You have raised an army for yourself. If you pack and something wants to happen, there's a way they appear. Say, daddy, one year, daddy, one year. Oh, no, lay demon, you lie, lie. They, they, will, they, they, will, they will break side mirrors to see you pass. And many times, it's not big money. Ah, Daddy, cook, let me take a look pure water. Oh, yeah, go pure water. It can save you hours. So the Bible has taught us, but people will not listen. Every time you meet police, you, you squeeze your face. Let go, let go. It may not be much. It may not be much. Police is your friend, it's true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The lips of a priest should speak wisdom. Police is your friend, it's a reality. But there's a way police becomes your friend that people have not learned. If you learn that way, they'll be your friend. Because the policeman is a human being. If you care about police, he will care about you. Ha! He will born say mu etu wanu lata ro. Oh yeah, your eyes block. Mu kaka, mu kaka. You will be safe. Abel Kota was partially blocked when Peter Jerry was driving me to the park. That's our brother, Peter Jerry. Every police checkpoint we got to, we passed. We, they create, they stop cars to make us move. Ah, that they are your I don't say, Peter Jerry, you don't become daddy for, <laughs> for this place. He said he used to assault them. I said, good. So now when we need them, we are not even asking for help. They are just making way. Well, some things come with age. Um, what does it mean to set? I found four words in scripture. The first word is to appoint. So when God says he has set you, it means he's giving you governmental authority to function within a space, an appointment. Two is to visit upon a person. So when God says I have set you, it means I have visited upon you. Three, if the word set is to, to pay attention to, That's the Greek word pocket or pocket based on the intonations. The last thing is to commit for care, to give something to be catered for, certain. So what I did was to arrange it in a way that it can be a protocol. So we start with three. So when God sets a man, he begins his labor around that man by paying attention to that man. And when God begins to pay attention to you, what you come into is, an, is, is a, 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 a regime of communications from God to show that you are under a spotlight. So he pays attention to. Two, 
As a result of him paying attention to you, he now visits upon you. He has watched you. He has watched you. He has watched you. He now comes to you. What is the third one? The third one will be one. When he comes to you, he now appoints you. He gives you government authority to function. The last one is that he now commits things to your care. He pays attention to, he visits upon, he appoints, and then he now commits to for care. This was what God did to Jeremiah, and that is what he wants to do to us tonight. We'll be praying in about eight minutes. Somebody may be asking the question, how does God get this thing done? By what tool does he set men? The answer to the how and the answer to the tool, that's the process. And the process tool are actually the same. Remember the topic is the twin, what? The twin streams of the anointing. So how does God set men? What is the process? What it does is that he anoints them. So the anointing is actually a process in God in his first stream because that is how. What tool does he use when he's anointing? It's also called the anointing. So the anointing is both a process and it is also a substance. It is the process and the substance. I have a lot of scriptures, but because of time. So, Psalm 23, verse 6. I think it should be 5 or 6. 23, 5 or 6. Let's, let's look at 5. And if it's not 5, then we'll go to 6. Right? Okay, 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he now reveals the process by which oil touches his head. Thou anointest my head with oil. So here, the anointing is not defined as a substance. It will have been, thou anointest my head with anointing. Are you with me? So the substance here was the oil. And many of those metaphors were used to capture the future realities of the giving spirit. That's the Holy Ghost. When he had not yet been given. Oil. Sometimes water, sometimes fire. Are you with me? What else? Wind, breath. So many metaphors. But thou anointest. He's saying what God did was to anoint with oil. And I've told you that anointing with oil, this process looks like um, a lady doing makeup. She's been in the sun. This cheek is dark. The forehead is dark. You know, some bit of busted pimples has created dark spots. What she does is to pull out her palette. Is that not what they call it? Eh? You people don't use. What do you call it? Eh? Palette. Where's my sister? In Where's the baller? Eh? Is you palette you call it? With brush, Abby? Because eh, I know she used to paint very well. So, eh? Meanwhile, she paints commercially too. So, in case you want to marry, you can. So, they now go gradually. I found out it looks as if before they start the general painting, they first zoom in on the areas that advertise defects. If men, as evil as we are, are that wise to first mask defects, how much more the Holy Ghost? It means when he begins to do that job, you will be more conscious of your shortcomings than your strengths. It's because he has stepped in. He won't be do advertising those things to condemn you, but you'll find out that there is a deliberate labor of heaven to ensure that those things, they no longer manifest. He paints, he paints, and tonight we paint. You just wake up, you stand in front of the mirror and Show me not more that obey. Oh, that obey anointing me. 
Is that Pastor Judah? Ah, oh, yeah, come and sit here. Come and sit here. I will not continue. Thank you, Pastor Leon. Oh, yeah, come, 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 come. How you go, come to sit down there. Oh, yeah, come. Bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come and sit down. Meanwhile, this thing that you did for me, me too, I'll do it back. And one day in the middle of your summer, I'll just sit down. I'll wear my dark glasses. No, 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 no. Please celebrate God's service. That's it. It's, 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 bring him, bring him. Bring him, bring him. Let him. Perez, it's good to see you, Jerry. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh-huh. He paints. He paints. And he paints like no other. When we paint, when ladies paint, many times the painting is superficial. He paints deeply. When, when human beings paint, they paint temporarily. He has mastered how to paint permanently. That the fault sinks. And the weak man becomes strong only by the swipe of his brush. Thou anointest my head with oil. You see, when the sheep eats, the sheep eats like this. Sometimes, because the sheep is not wise, he sees a hole and eats into grass beside the hole. And the enemy comes like a serpent, strikes the middle of his head. But you see, what that ointment that is put there actually does in effect is anti-snake venom. You elongate my life. You establish me in the realms of the living. Anoint my head. Anoint my head. Let the things that the enemy did to, to weaken me, to deplete my strength, let them not work. Anoint my head. 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 That's how we cry sometimes in daily fashion. Anoint my head. Anoint my head. So something was programmed yesterday and the enemy felt that the effect to be lasting. No. He anoints. Anoint my head. Anoint my head. Let my frailties lose their force. Let my proclivities designed to waste me not have their power. Let what was designed to hinder lose its potency. Anoint my head. Kelombe kamombe la sola kwata. Anoint my head. Don't leave my head. Don't leave my head. Cover me in the anointing. Cover me in the anointing. Cover me in the anointing. Let my preservation be by the strength of your activity. Oh, my cup of 
Sufa tuta lataye ele teta bobo botampai rava kabo teto kele tua tuska tivre kebo kelamo anoint my head in the name of Jesus you may be seated you may be seated anoint my head so the anointing is is a process it's a process he anoints he anoints how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth process not the substance the substance was the Holy Ghost and power and as a result of the activity and the substance the Bible said Jesus went about doing good he was setting at liberty all that were bound by the enemy and it was because God was with him but you see beyond the anointing being a process of endowment a process in which God smuggles his realities into men the anointing is also a substance Isaiah chapter 10 from the 26th verse. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up his cord for him according to the slot of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was upon the sea, so shall he, and as his rod was upon the sea, speaking of the crossing of the Red Sea. So shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. Next verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now it's not because God did something. Some translations say and the yoke shall be destroyed because you have grown fat. You know that the, you started with it as a chain when you were small. Now it has become a choker. What happened? You grew. Something was in, imputed that, that facilitated expansion. I've been telling my wife, I say, my suits, may God save me. And I know they do chop. We we'll call it pastor's disease. You come back at 10, they give you food at 12. You go to sleep at 1, you'll be fat. That's the cheat code to grow in the stomach. Fatness. Fatness. When Jesus said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued. The concept of endowment is actually, let me give you the picture. In Judaistic times, if a man wants to marry, there's a way the man is supposed to also physically look. You know, now people marry as one pack. You know what one pack is? It means from the neck to the lower abdomen, it's just one straight interface. You cannot, what do they call those muscles, medical people? Eh? You said what? His biceps here. Ah. Mind yourself. Here. What do they call them? Okay, you don't know. Do you do physical and health education here? No body physiotherapy. They, they will not come to church today, I know. Okay. You shall know the bones. Okay. Have you seen Cristiano's score and take off his shirt before? That, that's, the way that chest is demarcated, that's how the man is supposed to. But the Jews have a process that can convert somebody with one pack to six pack in a few days. The process is called endowment. What it leaves the man with, the man is not strong, but it gives him an advertisement of strength, endowment. I don't know what the process is. I didn't study it. 
I just wanted to know what it meant by endued. It is what you do to a weak man that gives him an appearance of strength. I've grown fat. I've grown fat. It's like you're injected with a substance. And then you can run faster. Was it Carl Lewis some years ago? No, Carl Lewis was the one that became Olympic 100 meters winner because the guy who became first, I've forgotten his name, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Performance enhancement. I think that's why Pogba 2 is not playing football now. They claim that it was a performance enhancing. So he can bully you for 120 minutes. And I heard that some pastors preach with it too now. That they, some people inhale stuff, they smoke stuff. They now put some more inside it. I think it was three years ago in Ilorin that somebody was hospitalized. The guy was preparing for 10 hours prayer meeting. <laughs> he now took some bit of, uh, what's that, that, he now took some tramadol so that when you are praying by six hours you will think that you're under a curse meanwhile the guy is fluid he can be fluid for for two days on the strength of tramadol the arm of flesh will fail you tarry until he be endued the reason why jesus told them to wait is that there's one who will come. If you instruct people to wait, it's because there's a program that is secured by many assurances that they will not wait in vain. Until ye be endued with power. Can I announce to you that the endowment did not end in the upper room? Can I also announce that the endowment is not designed to only happen in a church? Are you with me? You, you can press for endowment as one man. Actually, most of the things we pray around based on reality right now in church are built into private lives. There are things people can do by themselves. One of the advantages of doing them in church is that to experience leverage. Are you with me? If I pray now, you start sleeping. We will know that maybe you are cursed. And Pastor Diola can, he's a specialist with demons, so he can cast out the demons. And I'm not joking. You remember that meeting we went for? I just left him there, I went home. Because what they invited me to do was, it was an exam prayer meeting for. Exam anointing service. And I told them, they bought their oil. They poured it inside container. And now said, if you have issues around God, don't touch this oil. It's your oil. But if I pray into it, me, I'm one of the sons of Samuel. If the sons of Samuel bless oil, you'll be changed into another man. If you're a boy today, no thought you, you, you go poor. <laughs> ah. Those things are hanging. They are hanging. Men just need to labor to, to press into them. So, I think some people now felt it's our bowl, it's our oil, the only thing is our platform, it's our church, the only thing he has is mouth, a microphone. So when they touched it, they now became pastor, their last specimens. Because he needed to deal with the, with the post-service demonic. So I just went to rest. Thank you for coming that day. Mm. My time is up. Who want to pray? My time is up. Maybe the last thing I should do, ah, I can't even do that. I can't even do that. When I return, I will talk about the new place. The new place. And then we'll press in more on some of these prayers. Four definitions. The anointing is the vehicle through which the essence of God is established or a vehicle, because there are many of them, a vehicle through which the essence of God is established on people, on things, 
and in places for the advancement of God's enterprise. So the end of the giving of the anointing or the end of the process of the anointing is the advancement of the enterprise of God. Which if a man is aligned also becomes the advancement of the man. But God's advancement is primary. Your advancement is second. Amen. The anointing is that which confers the influence of the government of God. And I'm saying that because in the Old Testament, there were three essential offices with which God balanced the civilization of his people. It was the office of the prophet, the office of the priest, the office of the king. The believer actually sits in all of the, all of the offices. As you press into Christ, what did we do that meeting? Four square a campus fellowship, OAU. They told me to come and speak, speak on the office of the Christ. And I told them that in the real expression, the office of the Christ is pluralized because you cannot fully express the reality of that office without advertising him as prophet, priest, and king. That's the story that his life told. The strength of Christ's prophetic expression was not essentially built into his utterances, even though he had utterances. His life was a prophecy. This is how to live. Are you with me? And at that basic level, the life of every believer is supposed to be a prophecy. If we want to know what the current emphasis of God is, what we are supposed to do is to look at you. Whatever your life is emphasizing is supposed to be what God is emphasizing. I'm saying that so that you will live your lives with greater conviction and you live your lives with greater care. If you become prayerless, what it's supposed to mean is that God is no longer concerned about prayer. That's what, that's what your life is supposed to be. Because Jesus' life was an emphasis. And that prophetic strain began from Abraham. He was referred to as a prophet and you need to tell me when he prophesied. He was basically one who received prophecies. But his life was a story that God was telling from heaven. It means he was acting out. Heaven was speaking forth. Ah! Help us. So all of us sit in that place. Not in the ecclesiastical office of the prophet. But your life is supposed to be a prophetic expression. Meanwhile, all of us, because we are born again can also peep into the things of the kingdom so all of us have a prophetic nature. Are you with me? The life of Jesus demonstrated priesthood after a new order. Because in the Old Testament priesthood, at foundationally, the priest and the sacrifice are different. You bring goat, right? In the New, in the new Testament priesthood that Jesus advertised, the priest and the sacrifice are the same thing. Because we're called to offer ourselves. That's what Paul was emphasizing in Romans chapter 12. I urge you therefore, brethren. What he was appealing was first to our sense of indebtedness by the message of God. Two, he was appealing to our priestly nature. The last is king. And Peter bears witness to who we really are. It says that you are a chosen generation. And I've been studying Peter. When I got to a chosen generation, I now ask myself, why did the Bible use A? Because what we used to call ourselves is the chosen generation. Does it mean that there were other chosen generations? And you know, Pastor Judah is so he's my guy in these things. So does it mean that there were other chosen generations? Because say A is that one of the chosen generations. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. So, our priesthood actually is an operational outlook of our kingship. That's what royal priesthood means. It means they are kings. But how they function is that they function as priests. So that Bolu, if God gives you a constituency, maybe the area where you are living, and you want to, you won't just wake up in the night and say, let there be light. You will need to get into prayer and priestly prayer.
to be able to establish the kingdom of God. So you operate as a priest, but it's because you have a throne attached to you, and the throne foundationally defines you. So the believer is also a prophet, priest, and king. That's what qualifies to become new, the new homes of the anointing. Because in the Old Testament, if you were not a prophet, if you were not a priest, if you were not a king, then the oil could not be poured upon you. Meanwhile, you have a verse like, touch not my anointed. Are you with me? So, if you want to find out who was in that class, you will go to the definitions of anointing. The anointing was a tool of appointment. So, every one of the children of Israel was captured in touch not my anointed. It's a nation that I have chosen and I have smeared with a mark. This is mine. So, if you were a two-year-old, you were the anointed in a way. Somebody say in a way. But in the New Testament expression, you are the home of the anointed. It means your life was not designed to be natural. You were supposed to do everything from the standpoint of one that is endued. Did you hear what I said? Your life is supposed to be lived perpetually advertising strength that is not your own. You'll be expressing something that God did to you that muted your humanity and now makes your prey divine. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. The Bible says they shall mount up. Human beings don't have wings. But there are things that are done to them in the spirit that they begin to glide, ascend in God. However, they don't ascend with struggle. They ascend as though they had wings. So it's something divine they are doing, but they are doing the supernatural like it's a natural thing. How do you pray like that? How many cups of caffeine do you drink? There's one Coke that has plenty of caffeine inside it. Um, is it Coke? There are two kinds of Coke. Abby. There's a the normal Coke, there's zero Coke. Is there a top one? Eh? If I start with big cola now, they may arrest me. So, <laughs> big cola. I'm saying that there are things that you can drink, like we just shared. I will give you longevity. How many of you have seen the forge? How did they meet with the other? They didn't even say, give me a drink. They were saying, I just need some caffeine. They can walk all night. <laughs> so, people would think you're on caffeine. They're not. It's just an endowment. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am. Because the Lord. So stay there. Stay there. No, 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 don't worry. We pray. I want us to pray. I'm trying to journey with that song that the only reason why the weak saying I'm strong is not positive confession. It's not say it long. Keep saying, keep saying it until you now believe it. It's a testimony to a reality that they are conscious of. That the Lord has done something. A man has been endued. So when he becomes endued, his testimony must change. Are you with me? Only be tall on muwalo. Let me say it in Yoruba. Only be tall on muwalo. The command in the realm of the spirit is built into Deuteronomy chapter 2. Let's read from verse 1 and then go to pray. I have quite a number of verses. So that I, you, now you know that I will return because I will continue my sermon when I come back. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. We kept going in circles. We kept going in circles. You know how to do circular ministry. 
God emphasizes purity. He emphasizes power. He emphasizes operating by spirit. By the time the people get into the operations of the spirit, a purity problem has happened again. So, there's progress. But you see, the emphasis is on changing because none, no problem was fully solved. The emphasis of the spirit is not just built into what God wants to do. There is a corrective labor that furnishes emphasis in a ministry. Am I right, sir? That God looks, most of Paul's letters were even built into that. He finds out there's a problem with a church and then he begins to speak about that problem. It becomes doctrine. If a people don't grow well, they will become professors very soon. You know who a professor is? He, he knows so much about so little. That's who a professor is. So he starts with general physics. Then he now takes Newton's law. So he has mastered Newton's law so much because of repeated emphasis. But he can no longer testify that he knows physics. It means there's a place in Christ. Tiru, Jobet, in Koset, Boboba. So Because in the prophecies in Malachi, he doesn't do his potting in a rush. He shall sit. It means until he wins, he will not go. After a while, a church that was supposed to, to, to embody the full gospel will have mastered the corner. Because that corner advertises the emphasis of God because they are unyielding. I've heard people say, God, before God wins in your life on the issue of purity, it will take him 20 years. I found out that sometimes the reason why it took 20 years for the speaker is that co, co yield. Co yield. Tobate te saw yes. Now we have built doctrine around unyieldedness. How long did it take Peter to abandon his ways and follow Jesus? Follow me. And he left. Some people it takes 30 years to leave. I'm trying to mentor somebody. It's, it took 45 years to leave. Now the person is almost 70. And the response is, can you tell me the things I must do to, to press? It's like saying, can you tell me how to die? See how we're laughing at Bani. Abu will say, okay, every night for the next day, uh, for the next three years, you, you'll be praying like this. So every time I get the call, I just say, God, we help us. Anu, anu, anu loku. That's what you mean. Mess is the only way to survive. You don't believe me. Your Bible, my Bible, he says it is good for a man. Tobiah is young when he's young. It's because God knows what he, being a youth is advertised in. His strength. That's the glory of a youth. Old men have glory too. It's wisdom. It's not strength. It means the traffic of an old man is wisdom based. The traffic of the youth is strength based. You can't invert it. Because he said, told to to share the place around. We are going to fara run. Ogbo ma wa ma fi run. To ba ti fara run. You will just be knowledgeable. You the things will not be practicable because it has no basis in the things that you procured by strength. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. I'll do a part two when I return. But I want us to because we have a promise. We a compassed or compassed Mount Sarah many days. Verse 2. Verse 2. And the Lord spake unto me. So the way God aborts these cyclic journeys is that he brings another communication. 
What did he say? Verse 3. You have compassed this mountain for too long. John, you are stronger than this now. And if you don't press, we'll soon get used to you. Are you with me? We'll soon get used to you. One of the strengths of a minister, I'm not talking about song, in spiritual essence, is newness. What that newness actually means in natural language is freshness. It means you can come to sing a song you sang before, but our collisions will be like we have never been here before. Are you with me? If you stay on one spot for so long, and I found out if you are not making progress, then you are actually retrogressing. There are not too many structures to support stagnancy, especially when it is about going up or coming down. I was sharing last week that some of you have had rapture dreams that you were going up. Pastor Judah, have you had it before? When you were small. You were going up, you were going up. You now got to one place, you'd not go up again. Now, how many of you have had it in dreams? You now start coming down. You now wake up. You now start begging Jesus. There are not too many structures to keep men in a limbo. If you are going up, you are going up. If you stop going up, you likely start coming down. There's a new place. And the vehicle of entrance is the anointing. God will endure men. He will endure men. My prayer points are five prayer points. We'll pray only two. And then we'll start out praying the two. So because we're out of time, in the name of Jesus, we decree that this week, from now till Sunday, is the season of the anointing. What it means is that there will be multiple interactions with the Holy Ghost to endure men. Can I encourage you to go to bed differently? Make out time. Make out time. It means that the atmosphere over us as a people is charged with a readiness to suck men into a new place. That's what God is saying to us. Into a new place. Into a new place. That you show up wiser. That you show up stronger. Oh, Baba, Baba. Tama, Baba, 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 Selvo palato, ronto fata bertoma man palakaba. Lord, anoint me tonight into another place in you. Anoint me tonight into another place in you. Anoint me tonight into another place in you. It is as though there is a password to cross over. And that password is the anointing. You will be checked out for endowment. Tonight we ask of you, O oh God. Anoint. Anoint. Lento fe tua ta santo fe coma faracata ta fe pele capapate infri com papo 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 santifica panto ruas cavarata anoint me into another place in you seca te me que te fe catata ta pa catata aranto curta catai a carte fe capom de la carta ranto papo papo parte capam ratade si me copo popo ya se felenta ta cafafata ranta fi fe canas sati te fe te que tam baba copatai lito cato paporai e que ta farra cotate cataste there is a greater place of power. There is a greater place of illumination. Lord, anoint. Put your hand upon my life. Let the tokens of endowment appear. Greater grace. Toma konde fetena. Arifekaton fenetuna nante kepeta. 
papa pato como toco tatai tai ko pape sete que te fa capa tata tata com papa proda roto fa capante a to vida a to cavante com papai cavre pela ta com pampo patoria rifo com papo pele te cuva te cuva capa pe sei te com pambro ruto com vanta cata a tate com papo lanto e com papo ta capa pai tai va bato papo ta com papo pepe e ve pele cata patoria Stand of Riketo Katai. Put your hand upon my life. Let your essences rest upon me. So that I can be moved out. I can be moved out. I can be moved out. That's what the spirit is saying. As a house, we are due for moving out. On temboke lekete mentoriata. Akate te tente bai. Davi compa pona kanta, ta 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 pa pote, te te compa poka tati, katwa ti frata, ta ituva, kan sofe kete, kato pan ko frata, tu pa pa tai. There is another place in him. There is another place. It's a dimensional shift, not a new level. It's a dimensional shift, something higher. Something deeper. Oh my! Kai 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 kapo yokata. Shatu kuta feleketa. Kopronte kopo latte. Akopo pola kamananto lai. Oh! Si kope libre kete ve kapai. Anoint me. Anoint me. Shai perayata. Let a valley arata sata et a defet at a tie. Tombre fetato, Tobo popo capata tie. Saiki pepepe, elevekitapos, Sakatata tatuata, Candevlet tetolia, Licaparos, Elefeketeke madame Faradas, Rota fatai de Kutapacados. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. The anointing is also the communication of God's governmental essence. It's one way God flashes himself to a man that I am a king. I am a king. That's how men are brought into government. Tonight we want to ask him. That place is a governmental place. Pastor Diola, one of our destinies as a church is to express in governmental terms. And it, it's not just that um, we'll be passing decrees here. There is something that comes upon people's lives so that even in the secular, they can smuggle God for effect into places. Not just healing virtue, but throne realities. Okay, maybe, maybe before the year closes, I, I will teach on the governmental church. When Jesus was being advertised, I think you preached it on Sunday. A child born, right? Was it you? Good, thank you, sir. A child born, a son given. If that portion of scripture not only advertised Jesus in prophecy as a man, it advertised him as Jesus the body. He's the head. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the, and the, one of the greatest signs, apart as, as a matter of fact, based on Isaiah's prophecy, the most dominant token of the church is government. It's not singing. It's not dancing. Are you with me? The things we do are supposed to produce governmental reality. 
If you send three of us, even two of us, because it's two or three, that's our quorum. If you send two of us into a department, there, there is a dimension of governmental reality that we wield. It will shut down things. That's what a church looks like. This is not our place. A song is coming to my heart. I don't know if it's a or one of those people. Something, um, Satan Nikosimi. Who knows the song? Uh, the way it started was, it was like, was called Christiani. Christiani. Kill on Sene Bito Joko Sien. In order to advise him, everybody can say, Bubere, this is not your house. You were not promised here. Look at Abraham. A spirit invited him. The father of spirits invited him. When he got to a land, he reasoned that if a spirit invites you, what you are to inherit is spiritual. So instead of building houses, he built tents and tabernacles. He had to stay temporary because he knew that the end of a spirit's invitation is not a natural place. Maybe I should tell you, our movement was not supposed to end here from 40. This is not what he showed us. If it was God that initiated our movement, we are not supposed to be just comfortable in a house. One of the reasons I've been screaming out riches is because there are things that will never happen as long as we are locked there. It will only happen when we understand that this house is a gift into another place. And I'm not speaking of a bigger church. I'm, I don't have no obsession with Abi to build the biggest church in Talavia Kosibeg. Your essence comes tonight. Your essence comes. Where's our head of prayer? I want us to lead us in prayer for five minutes. Come, 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 come. They do not cannot not say to Kutakalana for us. A so paparacote falia so pende capoe. A pass so sofica teste pelletaste. A fete masto parati vasta capape. A brate caste fila parasta beatata. A fafaruste biante casa beata cae. Rute casto breke filasta. A brute kelia superiata pane cosa. A sotalia te camenosi paliata canamosata. We press in anacosa palata. Rita tando si calibrate iso. A sufrente casta beata casta. Rapa biaton bele kosia tapa, rekato si talia tapa pela kapa, rute kalu sabrendi kopila taste, efele teme supra kila stapa lia tapa le, rekondia supia te kasta palia tata, oh sakosin, oh spirit of grace, e pala su talia tapa li katoste, rute lia su kapalia sotata, rekapalia sopelia tapa pino. Rika palia sotalia ta kapa, rika ta palia sotalia ta, rika pa 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 kapa piata, asa palia ta kapa pila, rita kosia ta pila ta kapa, aso pa paria ta kapa, apa ruasa te kila kwata, rika pa sa te kapalia, rete pa pila ta pa pi pa pa pa, rekosia ta pila, ripa pala tuasa te hika, apala kwasa. Tata, e perete pi pa 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 pa, a sopa te kapalia, rita tata paste, e sopa te kapala, rita posi a tata, a sopa e kapa, rita palia so, e sope na, e sope na, e sope na te kapa, rita palasta, we pressina, a sata papi. Apala tosia takapa, repa papa papa papa, reta kapa pia 
strength. We march in might. Sad, 